So welcome back guys and it's Cringy Star with the most awesome at the very moment Abu Tarab And hopefully in today's video we're gonna talk about how to manage your time during gear 13 specifically Checkpoints in like for example the personal statement, BMAT, interview courses, when to revise The difference between taking notes and actually compiling and memorizing And hopefully we're gonna begin with Abu Tarab's essentially day in their life but podcast style so all right, so day in the life of almost a year ago, yeah, basically. Okay, okay, okay. So do you want me to start from like September wise, basically? Right from the beginning. So right, right from the beginning, the, um, my plan was actually a little bit different. First of all, because you got the UCAT, you got the BMAT, you got the personal statement, and you got the UCAS. So just okay, okay, one second, one second. Sorry, sorry for cutting them off. But one thing I was going to say is, because I said year 13 specifically, I want you to go from just year 13 summer so as in like summer's finished for year 12 mm -hmm. now you're the beginning of year 13 so september so yes, yeah. so you're saying that you basically done your ucat already mm. and essentially you should have your personal statement at least ready so in the final checks basically okay. but you still have the bima remember yes uh, unless you took the early bima in my case i took the early bima alhamdulillah so basically i was free at that time what i would say is that either you're revising for the bima so yeah. there are two groups of people okay. either they're revising for the bima for the late bima okay. or you are in my position which you probably took the uh, early yeah, bima which yeah. Right now, it doesn't really exist due to the exactly. due to the COVID. At least for this year, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So when it comes to the BMAT, guys, I would say is that because it's like end of September, end of October for you to do, what I would do is I would start off the A levels, yeah. and normally I would do all of my homework and understand the content that the teachers are teaching you. Okay. But I would make sure that at home, I'm actually revising for A levels. Do you understand? Right. So I'm revising for the BMAT right. because that one month I want to prioritize the BMAT. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not lost in the class and that you're not doing the homeworks and that you're not doing the, you know, the lab book uh, for you guys if you're doing maths, uh, what's it called, biology, chemistry, or physics. You want to make sure your lab book, everything's on up to date. Do you understand? Yeah, like the practical aspect of yes. that is assessed. Yeah. So make sure that everything's up to date, but that you're not actually going out of your way to do extra questions and wasting unnecessary time because that time you want to use simply for the BMAT. Do you understand? Understand. Okay. So once you do that one month of you just focusing on the BMA and you get rid of the BMA, mm. then it comes to the bit where you're basically either end of October or middle of October where you're basically sending off the application. Do you understand? Okay. So those few days you want to quickly properly understand which uni for sure you want to go to, which unis you have a plan to, what's going to be your backup fifth choice for either medicine or dentistry okay. and then you want to send off everything and then from basically the 15th of October or let's say 30th of October if you do your late BMAT yeah. you are sorted, do you understand? And all you're doing now is going to be A-levels and A-levels. So what I want to do right now, you first of all talk about what you would do in this period and also what you do in the period of October. With the BMAT, I'd say potentially I revised three to four weeks. Now, the beauty of having an exam straight after the holiday is that you can use the holiday to maximize any time that you need for revision. You ensure that you bang it out there and then. So I'd say within that holiday, I probably done three to four hours a day, especially nearing the end. And this really ensured that I'd done all the past papers that are available on the BMAT website should be linked down below. Also the TSA papers, I didn't really start, but I did look at and there were a few groups in school that were actually teaching how to go through the TSA. Nonetheless, I was able to go through the majority of papers that were available to me. And obviously before that, just mentioning the point that I would I mentioned prior with the personal statement it was early September that I was able to go to a lot of teachers able to get it redrafted and the beauty of starting the personal statement near the beginning of September or at least compiling the majority of the information that you require because this year you don't have the luxury of having work experience but there are Instagram pages such as we are medics that are offering free clinical online work experience so hopefully that should sort of like differentiate you from a lot of the people but on top of that it's normal like it's going to be relative not all the students are going to have the work experience so it's just about being better than the majority that will allow you to secure that medical space so again don't panic don't go crazy and let's get straight into the personal statement right now so potentially it won't be as filled with content nevertheless i was able to compile nearly a finished version of my personal statement 
really early October. I didn't have to worry about it, especially near October 15th, which I think is the deadline for UCAS. Once we essentially banged the personal statement and the BMAT, because both of us done a BMAT, my guy scored a 4.5 on section three, so he absolutely killed it. He's a humble one, he is. Nonetheless, then is the preparation for the interviews, as well as catching up the a level content that you sort of neglected especially when it comes to the questions and the summary of essentially the topic so now abu torab what do we do after the october essentially after we finished mm -hmm. the beam out so what are you gonna do now so um the main point of this video is okay. also to kind of give you like a walkthrough of what you should do in year 13 okay. and then how to actually balance A levels alongside with all of the stuff in year 13. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So we're not, one difference is that we're not in year 12 where you have lots of time and stuff like that. Mm. You are in year 13, you just finish your UCAT and BMAT. You mm. put all of that effort in for personal statement. Now you need to get the grades because at the end of the day, you can have the best BMAT, the best UCAT, mm -hmm. you can get the best offers from Cambridge, mm. wherever, mm. but if you don't get the A levels, you're not going to get in. Whereas if you do have the A levels, you can at least take a gap here. Do you understand? So there are more possibilities. Do you understand? One thing I'm just going to highlight is that with the BMAT exam, with the UCAT exam, with the interviews, you can do them again. But if you neglect your A levels, you're not able to resit it for many of the universities. Many of the universities say A level sat in one sitting. If yeah, you for medicine. Exactly, for medicine. So, for medicine. So, go ahead, Abitur. Okay. So, what I would say is that after that, it's October time, right? Mm -hmm. And this October time slash November, depending on when you finish. So, assuming that we finish everything BMAT, now is the time for you to get serious. Now, what I mean by that is that now you need to just focus on A levels. Mm -hmm. However, in my time, I also did working. You did that as well, right? I did my two tutoring and I also make sure that I went to Islamic talks and stuff like that and I also made sure I went to the gym but now this is where it becomes hard juggling all of the stuff mm -hmm. so what I would say is that when it comes to my day and how it worked it, it worked out for me so it's quite subjective yeah. Perhaps it won't work out for you guys. But the way I do it is that I wake up early in the morning. And I mean early, like 4.30, 5 o'clock. Especially during the winter times. It's nice and dark. And everyone in the family is sleeping. You wake up. You pray because that's the most important thing. And after that, you start off and you do like an hour revision at least. Do you understand? So you have a good hour revision. So wake up pray good hour vision then have breakfast and then i used to go straight to the gym by the time i went to the gym it was seven o'clock right so i went to the gym with all of my equipment yeah my bag was a little bit heavy with you know the books and yeah, stuff like that and also the equipment for you to get changed and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. so i would go to the gym uh, get my workout in and i would also make sure that i get i have a shower there and get changed there and go straight to school because one thing i'm going to say to you guys is that a lot of people especially your teachers they're going to tell you that in year 13 you need to focus on a levels which is the main important thing mm. but you have to sacrifice something to understand mm. so you have to either sacrifice something like islamic lectures or perhaps in our case you know gym islamic lectures or wrestling whatever you do mm. you have to sacrifice something mm. but for me personally i wasn't ready to do the sacrifice to understand okay, yeah. so i was like you know what it's too early for the sacrifice, October. So this is why I, I would rather sacrifice one to two hours of sleep in the morning yeah, yeah, to get the to get the gym, mm. yeah, and to get like a, an extra kind of revision. Mm. Plus, if you wake up that two extra hours early, yeah. You know, gym shouldn't take more than an hour, especially yeah, yeah. if you're, you know, if you're going there for quickly getting the body to pumped up. Yeah. And then I would have that extra hour perhaps in the evening because I revised early in the morning yeah. to go to an Islamic talk or go to the masjid and stuff like that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that people say, oh, you have to sacrifice something. Do you understand? Yeah, no, okay. Sometimes you do have to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And I would sacrifice something if I was two months before the exams. Yeah, do you sorry, understand? Sorry, sorry. That's different. I'm not saying go to the gym until even on your uh, uh, A-level day, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. on exam. Yeah. Make sure you get yourself yeah. pumped up for yeah. the exam. I'm not yeah. saying that, guys. Mm. But I'm saying you have to be able to balance it. And bro, imagine a lot of people spend extra 20 minutes in the shower or in the toilet. And at the end of the month, you'll see it adds up to so yeah, many. I, it accumulates and it's so many hours so what I would say is wake up in the morning get rid of all of the stuff that you need mm. to and then the entire day literally I would go to school in the morning and I was ready to focus on my education yeah. and I had the entire evening entire day mm. to basically revise 
and I was still able to fit in my uh, gym, which is one of the most important things for me. Yeah. And then also you're able to take those little breaks to go to the masjid and pray. Mm -hmm. And also once a week or twice a week, me and my bro D Thanix as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes even you, down below. we used to go to the uh, Islamic talks yeah. like once or twice a week. And we'd have that one to two hours spare to spend there. Do you understand? Yeah. So you're not sacrificing anything. Do you understand? Yeah. Because it's that's how you have to think of it, bro. No, I get you. Do you get it? And then Abitar basically, he spoke about the mic micro management essentially within the day I'm gonna speak about the macro management now now what's really really important at this stage is that you're compiling the notes that you require and then we have a whole video on that that you can check out should be up here or up there I don't know where I'm gonna put it nonetheless at the end of the video it should be there present now what that basically covers is where to get your revision resources and what you sort of need because when it comes to physics there will be always be topics like topics about like centripetal force if you're doing physics or certain um, I don't know what's the ketone our functional groups all that oh yeah the organic chemistry organic chemistry that that's you know it's been some time yeah, but it's been a long time bro it's been me, three months me, me, what, how long six months something like that it's been a long time bro yeah, since yeah, we yeah. properly done the thing yeah. so with these topics it does take time it does take videos that you need to watch from like tailored tutors or things of that nature science shorts for physics oh this guy called allure chemistry he basically links will be down there in the mm. description allure chemistry he basically does every single in one video he talks about every content bit that you need mm -hmm. to know of organic chemistry and organic chemistry oh, yeah. every single bit do you understand oh, yeah. he's one guy that I really used and he has like summarized everything in one little whiteboard is it? do you understand yeah okay. so you can just take screenshots of that so guys one more thing that I wanted to mention is that this literally made me think this little conversation that we're having that a lot of people sit down for five hours and they only get like one hour two hours worth of studies yeah. now obviously we made previous links uh, videos about that links will be down there in the description below feel free to check them out yeah. but we talked about effective ways in which you can revise for essentially GCSEs, A levels, mm. and hopefully later on in uni yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. inshallah. Okay. So, what it is, guys, is that you really deep it that people do five hours of revision and they don't get as much out of it. Do you understand? And when you think like that, you realize that you really do have time throughout the day to balance and do other stuff. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that I also did tutoring part time on Saturday, Sundays mostly, mm. but I was willing to give that up literally around april time so that for two months before exams i could go ham on the revision do you understand i understand so, you but i wouldn't really recommend that obviously avatar is a different type of beast he can do that but i'm just saying for me i'd say stop revising or not stop revising absolutely wrong carry on revising but stop working near the end of march we'll quickly go back to it before we carry on with your point now with your interview preparations whether that means places where they do mmi mm -hmm. practice essentially near the end of december one thing that you should really do is start preparing for your interviews if you have applied to oxford or cambridge the interviews are early january i believe but, it could but be other, I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure about that. Okay, because uh, we it, it depends. It depends on the person. Obviously, we didn't apply to Oxford, yeah, so that's what I'm so it also depends because sometimes they give you the offer slightly later because they see applicants that perhaps have better. No, I don't think for Cambridge. Oh, yeah, I don't think right, Cambridge. Right. You're no, talking, not for Oxford. Yeah. Oxford you know, yeah, no, because you you get it earlier. Mm. But the point is until the end of march yeah there is a possibility of you getting an interview, uh, an interview. Yeah. so that's why i mentioned april because april is the time that you know for sure that you finish everything including interviews everything that you need to do you understand nearly the end of content within school as it is exactly so that's the time for you to do past papers past papers and revise revise and revise and as i said we always talk about revising smart and not necessarily always revising yeah. hard do you understand 100%. it's best to do both at the same time do you understand that's the way i see it so yeah guys uh, my point still remains the same that i would say april time from the beginning of april yeah ham out everything do you understand mm. and as i said this is subjective for me at the end alhamdulillah it worked out whatever happens yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Allah. but every person is different perhaps sometimes someone can follow this yeah. and fail or sometimes can, someone can follow this and even do more stuff than me yeah, yeah, yeah. and still it depends on the person we're just here to say you know just to give some generic advice some keys into balancing mm. time especially at a levels because we've only we've not only done it ourselves but we've seen other people do it so inshallah hopefully that works out and again, like with Torah, he's saying April, give it some time for contingency or essentially stop working March time. And even so, like you don't need to necessarily attend all the MMI courses, all the interview courses throughout the entirety until we take a interview. You just need to essentially solidify the basics and then the rest will have to be via practice many people have the perception that the more they revise how to do interviews the better that they're going to perform not necessarily 
Because a lot of it will be spontaneous, a lot of the questions you won't know, such as the UCL interviews, the Imperial interviews, you will not know the question behind it, and you can't necessarily revise. Now, hopefully we'll make another video on the exam timetable, which, it, which sort of past papers to take for different subjects, and the breakdown of how many to take within two days to three days, and that should be linked down below if this comes out in the next month. We yeah, we've we, got a lot of videos we, scheduled. Yeah, we don't know, we don't know. Well, but just to mention quickly, guys, uh, we obviously mentioned this before but we do plan these videos especially this podcast yeah. much earlier than the release date yeah, yeah. the reason being and that's why you know sometimes someone will see us with a haircut right now mm. and then well, by the time they come and be like hey, hold on a second why is your hair grown yeah, up yeah, yeah. it's because what's important about scheduling things is that you're always making sure you're ahead and i wanted to link this to a levels oh, yeah. because you want to make sure that you're always also ahead of the content you understand mm. and you want to make sure that you know what's happening and that what i would say for example one more thing is that whenever you're revising for a levels you want to make sure that you revise the content that you're going to be learning the week after yeah. make sure you already know some stuff so when you go to the class you're not like literally you don't know what's going on do you understand and did you, you finish a... did you finish content um before the teachers way before me personally oh, yeah. this is the way i see it so once you once you finish off the content before yeah. and you go through the teachers again mm. it's the second bit of your memorization yeah, yeah. it's not the first one so you're not learning stuff and it's not going to be in your short memory it's more likely to be in your long, long memory long so this is the way i see yeah. it so i would say 100 percent. make sure you're above when it comes to the content 100 mm. percent. because once you finish the content you yeah. can bang out the past papers exactly. one after one yeah. every question because you know where it is yeah. and you have like this imaginary mind map in your head yeah. and you know that okay this organic chemistry is this physical chemistry is this yeah. inorganic is this yeah. this is what i know this is what i don't know yeah. and that's so so important and i did this throughout my entire life even at gcc alhamdulillah i make sure Allah that Allah you don't wait for the teachers Allah and that's that that's Allah a lot of uh, uh, right, right. That, that's not only me don't get me wrong that's a lot of people they think like that mm -hmm. and i just wanted to say in this video because it's very important you yeah, understand no, and that also ends up is because you it, it links to this bit of us scheduling videos later yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah. because it really makes you understand what's coming forward you understand 100%. so 100 percent. i get what torab's saying and hopefully we're going to end it off with this is it a proverb if you fail to prepare you please tell you, me you don't know that you, if you fail to prepare yeah. you fail to succeed Oh I just made that up. I God. I just, if you sure. fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Oh, I know, oh. I know. It just didn't come tomorrow. Yeah, whatever, guys. So, guys, go Bro, check out the playlist that's going to be on the end card of this video. You oh. know, I'm, I, I, because you said that, I'm going to yeah. plug in my, my quotes page on okay. Instagram. Okay, okay, right. So, links will be down there. And hopefully, you're going to do me nicely and okay. put a picture on the okay, screen okay, no, no, no. where I made over 50 quotes. So, yeah, don't, yeah. don't blame me okay, when it comes okay. to the quote bit. Uh, so, yeah, nonetheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, it was beneficial, inshallah. inshallah. And, yeah, guys, remember. Everything we're saying is our opinion mm. and it's subjective. And if you don't care about our opinion, then we don't care about yours. Yeah, peace!